How would you feel if, as we said heard earlier from a cabinet uh, minister, that your hip, hip, op, hip operation or any other procedure was carried out in a private hospital? If you are, and you have every right to be, uh, a true socialist and believer in that, how comfortable are you with the idea there could be a £1 billion deal or rescue plan, as one paper, paper calls it, to clear the backlogs? And it would result in the independent sector funding the biggest expansion in healthcare since the days of Tony Blair. Well, we'll speak with experts on this in just a moment. But in the first hour, I spoke with Senior Government Minister Pat McFadden. I asked him about this story. How comfortable is he with the, uh, the idea of the NHS using the private sector to a much greater extent in this rescue mission? Oh, it's happened in the past to, to, to buy, you know, I can't comment on that particular story, but to buy in private capacity. Look, if I was a patient on a waiting list waiting for my hip or knee replacement, am I going to worry uh, which hospital it's in? Uh, as long as it's the NHS rate, it's good value for the taxpayer, uh, we want to get these waiting lists down. David Hare is Chief Executive of the Independent Healthcare Providers Network and features in the article in today's Daily Telegraph. And I understand, Mr Hare, you've written to the Chancellor and the Secretary of State for Health about this. What have you said and what do you hope to come out of it? Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Um, uh, as Fadden says uh, there, the public is generally pretty relaxed about who provides their NHS-funded treatment, providing it's good quality and free at the point of use. And, of course, the private sector's use in the NHS is nothing new. It's been done for decades, and indeed now one in five of all NHS-funded operations, uh, and about one in four of all NHS-funded scans is actually done in the private sector. So this is nothing new. I think what we are saying is, given the state of the public finances, given the back of maintenance pressures on public capital as a nearly 12 billion pound backlog maintenance uh, number uh, that, that needs dealing with actually we need to think creatively about how we get uh, extra capital investment into new facilities into new sites whether that's community diagnostic centers new surgical hubs uh, and so on and what we are saying is look there is a, an appetite to do that uh, on NHS terms we need a long-term partnership with the government to do that to recover the uh, waiting list position, which, as figured out yesterday, showed the overall NHS waiting list remains at record levels. So it's an act of recovery, and appreciating you're on the independent healthcare side here, is the idea this will allow the NHS to eventually catch up and be back where it wants to be, or there will always be a degree of reliance? Where are you on that? I think there will always be uh, a degree of reliance on the private sector. Uh, the NHS, it's kept secret really, is the NHS has always been a public-private partnership since 1948. So I think that model is likely to continue. The big challenge we face now, I think as the Secretary of State West Streeting has indicated, is to get those waiting lists back down to manageable numbers. Government ambition is to do that over the lifetime of this parliament. That is very ambitious. Uh, and it's going to need all of the healthcare system, like it did during the pandemic, to work together uh, to achieve that aim. What level of capacity do you have then on your side, as it were? So what we're describing here, I think, is two, uh, two pronged, really. So first of all, every month, tens of thousands of, of, of slots go on to sort of NHS uh, referral system, if you like, and go unused. Um, and get either withdrawn or, or, or redeployed for, for private patients. Uh, patients could be choosing to use those, uh, and in effect, that's a patient that's not able to get access to the treatment. What we're saying is we need to make much better use of that existing capacity now uh, that could treat probably a million patients a year. Uh, in addition to that, uh, with a long-term partnership, we think private capital is available to develop, develop new facilities in partnership with the government and with the NHS where it is felt they would be useful. What, what, well, give me an idea where that private capital may be, may be deployed. What, what sort of things are you talking about? Uh, I mean, a very good example, and, and, and we saw this under the latter stages of the last government, is something like a community diagnostic centre, you know, a multi-modality centre doing MRI scans, ultrasound, potentially C, uh, CT scans as well. Uh, maybe in the high street, accessible places, um, you know, built and developed by the private sector with a long-term contract able to scan many more NHS patients. That's a very good example of how you can cleverly use private capital to get a new scheme going relatively quickly to improve access and, uh, and, and, and outcomes for patients. So lastly, do you see the NHS being able to play catch up? Just to drill down to that again. Uh, look, I, I think everybody in the healthcare system has to have the ambition to improve the overall performance of the NHS. The current position of the NHS is not uh, is not uh, acceptable to the public mm. uh, and we have to improve access to all parts of the healthcare service and this isn't going to be a silver bullet but potentially will be a good way of looking to do that. Well I'm sure a lot of my listeners are celebrating the news. Thank you for your input and thanks obviously for the provision through your 
the members and the providers. David Hare is Chief Executive of the Independent Healthcare Providers Network, 12 after 8. Listen to 